Hey, Shalom, brothers. Shalom, brothers. Yahweh by Shimei Shai, Brother Thug. Shimei Shai, Brother Thug. First one say, Brother Thug Yahweh. Brother Thug Yahweh Shai. For water, Yahweh by Shimei Shai. For another day to voice this word. It's, it's I to Zion, Elder Tazadatba is here. Shalom. And we're going to go right into it. So, brother, without no further ado, 2 Ezra 6, chapter, the first verse. Yep. 2 <clears throat> Ezra 6 and 1. And he said unto me, In the beginning, when the earth was made, before the borders of the world stood, or ever the winds blew, before it thundered and lightened, or ever the foundations of paradise were laid, before the fair flowers were seen, or ever the movable powers were established, before the innumerable multitudes of angels were gathered together. There's the Heavenly Father speaking. He's telling, <clears throat> basically he's telling the prophet Ezra, before this earth, before the moon, the stars, all these ordinance, all the ordinances that we see around us since we've been born on this earth, before all those things were put together, the Heavenly Father was always there. Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shah. All right? And by the way, the one who we call Yahweh is the one who you ignorantly called God. Right. His real name in the Hebrew is Yahweh. And his son, who you ignorantly call Jesus Christ, his name is Yahweh Shah. And they are black. All right? You Negroes, you Latinos, Native Americans here in North, Central, South America, and the islands, you are the descendants of the, you are Hebrew Israelites. That's right. You are the descendants of the 12 tribes, going back to the 12 tribes in Genesis. You are of the chosen line, whether you hear it or forbear it. Right. That's who you are. Okay, we just, just want to let you know that. So read that, continue on. It says, uh, verse 3, before the fair flowers were seen. Before there were flowers. Okay, go on. Or ever the movable powers were established. The movable powers are established. The angels. All right. Go on. Before the innumerable multitude of angels were gathered together. Before the angels were gathered together. Because we're all angels anyway. All of us were all angels. When we die, we go back into that. We go back into that angelic state when we die. Mm -hmm. Okay. When we die, we go back into the state of being an angel. See, we were the angels that were set up to... We could be in the spiritual world, but then we come into the physical world through the womb, through the birth. You got angels that are set up to totally just always be in the spiritual, in the spiritual realm, that they don't get to come back and forth like we do. So those are those angels are envious of us. The, there's a scripture that speaks about it. Uh, the one thing I remember that, that, like, that, that didn't keep your first estate. Right. The, uh, you got uh, you got the one that said the angels that kept not their first estate. And then there's one that said how they desire to look into the things mm -hmm. that we that we deal with, but they can't do that because there's certain angels that were set up to always be in the spirit. Mm -hmm. But this is it says before innumerable multitude of angels were gathered together. Okay, before multitude of angels were even created, the Most High was there. Yahweh was there. That's right. Go on. Or ever the heights of the air were lifted up, before the measures of the firmament were named, or ever the chimneys in Zion were hot. Look at that. That's right. <laughs> before the firmament, before you even had a firmament out there. Right, which is the ozone layer. Right. That protects the inner earth from outside the earth. That's right. Which you call outer space. Before all those ordinances were created. Go on. And earth... The present years were sought out, and or ever the inventions of them, that now sin were turned. Right, before all these idols, all these different religions, right. these different philosophies, before all these different philosophies, like you got dudes out there, like a guy might be into Islam, and he'll argue with you that Islam was always there. Which is bullshit. That, which is bullshit. Then you have a guy who's into Buddha, and he'll tell you that Buddha was always there, which is bullshit. You got guys that worship the rock and worship the meteor and worship this, that, and the other. Before all that confusion, all right, go on. It says, and ere the present years were sought out, and or ever the inventions of them that now sin were turned. Before these inventions is talking about these idols, like the brother is saying. These different gods and these, before these different gods and before these different idols were brought about, the Most High of Yahweh was there. Before they were sealed, that have gathered faith for a treasure. 
So before the, the elect, elect were elect. even sealed. Before the before the elect. Before the elect were sealed, because it says, before they were sealed, that have gathered faith for a treasure. And who's that talking about? The elect of Israel. That's right. So even before the elect were set up to be the elect, Yahweh was there. Verse 6. Then did I consider these things, and they all were made through me alone. That's right. And, 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 and the Lord had to always remind Mother Ephes that. Of course. Because men got proud. Especially Esau, the so-called white man. He's super proud. That's why they're trying to push the vibration that there's no God. And in case there is one, he's me. All right? He, well, the scriptures tell you that he sets himself up as a God. Well, hell, let's go before Esau. Yeah. The fucking Hamites. Yep. Because the, the major argument that we have when it comes to the word of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai, is with the Hamitic origins of what's known as the Epics of Gilgamesh and, and the Enuma Elish. And basically, the Epics of Gilgamesh is dealing with, um, to put it in a nutshell, you had a goddess named Tiamat, and I believe it was, uh, I believe it was Merodach. Merodach was the resident god of Babylon, and I believe, um, From, from the story about the goddess Tiamat, half of the body, she used half of the body to you to, to make the heavens and the other half to make the earth or something like that, however the, the, the story goes. But that's what you people refer back to when you say, uh, see, this was written, this stuff was written before the Bible, and it talks about a flood story in there. You dumb, mentally retarded ass niggas. It's always talking about this melanated shit. In the beginning, everybody was melanated or had or was dark skin. In the, in the very beginning. Now, the reason why the Epics of Gilgamesh and this and that talks about the flood because they came out the flood. Those are Hamites. Why do you call it Kemet? Because that name goes back to what? Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Or Shem, Chum, and your path. Hum is where the word Kemet comes from. So now they came out of the flood just like Shem and Japheth, the sons that came out of Ham. So in coming out of the flood, Ham, if you want to say Ham is the first one to, if you want to say, document something down. Right? But just because you're the first to document something doesn't make you the chosen. Because Israel, we were the last ones to come up. Mm -hmm. When you go through the when you go through the scriptures, we were like the baby nation that was set up. So when when I, when we started have keeping a record, so to speak, it was an oral tradition, right? But when it started being a record was when we came out of Egypt. And we were in what? The wilderness of Zin for forty years. Then the most high gave how things were created. He gave that Genesis to Moses right there when Moses was up on Mount Sinai. Written by letter, by the finger of the Lord, right? That fire issued out of the cherry into the stones and etched it in there. So it was given, that's when we documented, was at that point. Before that, we didn't have anything written down like that. So prior to that, the time of... Uh, the time of Moses is after the flood. So in that time leading up to us coming out of Egypt, in the time that, that uh, uh, transpired after the flood to the time of us coming out of Egypt, the Hamites, that's where you got the epics of Gilgamesh and the Enuma Elish because they came out the flood. So they knew about the story of Noah because they came out the flood. Ham was a part of surviving the flood. So that's how they knew about the flood and wrote about a, a great flood. You stupid ass people. Go ahead. You know what I'm saying? You're trying to make it, you're trying to make it so deep. First of all, they wrote, okay, fine. They, they, they wrote a story down, right? They wrote, a, they wrote a story down. The Hamites came through the flood just like Shem and Japheth came through the flood. They came through the flood too. Shem, Ham, and Japheth came through the flood. So then, guess what? The story was passed down orally to their children. So that's Put, Canaan, uh, Mizraim, 
in Cush. Ham told them the story of what the flood, because Ham himself came through the flood. I got, I got a scripture for Go ahead, you, brother. Going to the, what you said a while ago about us being our nation, which we are the nation of Israel or Yashar Allah. We were small. We didn't have, population wise, we were small compared to the other nations. Yep. At the time, this is Deuteronomy seven and six. For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God, which we say power. We don't say God. The Lord thy power hath chosen thee to be a special people unto himself above all people that are upon the face of the earth. So the Lord chose us above all people that are upon the face of the earth to be a special people unto him. So this was generations later that we came about. That's so, right. So now, things was, in the time of coming out of Egypt is when the Most High had Israel document something. It was, in other words, it was etched in stone. This is after coming out of Egypt. So prior to coming out of Egypt, Ham was established as a nation. The Hamites, the Hamitic nations were established as being nations. You, uh, you had what? After the flood, you had what? The first Babylonian Empire. With, uh, and the scriptures speak of them. I think it's Genesis 10, 13. It talks about Nimrod and the Tower of Babel, which was in what's known as Iraq today. That's the that's the actually the original land of the Cushites is uh, Iraq. What's known as uh, Iraq uh, to this day. That's where the Cushites is from. So you had that society, the ancient Babylonians. I'm not talking about Babylon with King Nebuchadnezzar. I'm talking about the first Babylon, which is where all of these different religions stem back to. Ur of the Chaldees, uh, what's known as uh, ancient Sumer. Not Sumeria with an A, but Sumerians, ancient Sumer, Ur of the Chaldees. That land is where all these different gods and deities came from. Ancient Sumer. Going back to Nimrod, his mother Ceramesis, and the son, they had Tammuz. Go ahead, brother. Verse 7, this Deuteronomy th uh, 7 and 7. The Lord did not set his love upon you, talking about Israel, nor choose you because sorry, because ye were more in number than any people, for ye were the fewest of all of all people. Right, we were the fewest of all people at the time. Okay, we, we, we were the youngest nation at the time. We were the fewest, but through the generations, uh, we multiplied and multiplied and became the biggest. The biggest nation on the earth right now is the nation of Israel. Because we're scattered throughout the four corners of the earth. And the Lord numbered us at the sands of the sea. That's right. So you can't number the sands of the sea. So you can't number Israel. You cannot number Israel. Israel is, is innumerable. Hey, and that, and that proves that that bullshit, and they still push that shit to this day here, here in North America. That you Negroes, which is one tribe out of the nation, by mind you, because there's 12 tribes in the nation of Israel, which which have, which have uh, consists of you Negroes, you Latinos, and Native Americans. But we were talking about the Negroes right now, the Negro tribes here in America. They said that you're 13% of the population. That's the same number they had back in slavery. Yeah. So that number never moves. So you go back go back to the um, 19th century, you were 13% of the population. You go back to the 17th century or the 18th century, right. you were 13% of the population. Show you was a fucking joke. And nobody never questions that shit. Right, nobody ever questions. You know, it's a lie. That, that's a it's a four hundred year lie. A four hundred year lie. So you mean to tell me you you got y'all didn't even get up to twenty percent? How about tell oh, shit? No, I'm, I'm gonna go back to nine percent. Yeah. It has to they keep that vibe that thirteen percent. Yeah, thirteen percent. You're thirteen percent. And they keep saying that shit, and you people eat it up, and you eat it up. It says this is verse eight, uh, Deuteronomy seven and eight. But because the Lord loved you, show you the Lord only loves one nation of people. He doesn't love everybody, as as your churches teaches. But because the Lord loved you, and because he would keep the oath which he had sworn unto your fathers, hath the Lord brought you out with a mighty hand 
and redeemed you out of the land, out of the house of of bondage from the land of the Pharaoh, king of Egypt. All right. So we were redeemed out of the house of bondage, out of slavery, out of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. So we were redeemed out of the house of bondage. All right. Because and we, and we went into the wilderness of Zin for forty years. That's right. And in that time, that's when the Most High documented things with us, with Israel, with His chosen nation. It don't matter what, what the hell the other nations are doing or what or what they got to say about anything. The Most High gave the understanding of how the earth was created, how it was formed, how long it took to Moses. He gave it to Moses. All right? It was given to Moses. Right. So you go back to Ezra. So I'm going to go back here to Ezra. Um, second Ezra. Uh, uh, six. Uh, let me say this real quick. Hey, Shalom to all you brothers out there again. Uh, in case this show stops, which I think is gonna, you can continue watching it on call it call out your your site. Uh, my site is disappoint the wicked. Disappoint the wicked. So if you if this video cuts off on Elder Design ones, it'll be continued on on my site, and then he'll I'll give him the footage from here and he'll upload it. Onto his, you know, we're just we got two cameras rolling, so yeah. So in case this stops in a couple of minutes, which I think it is, um, the rest of this show can be seen on the Disappoint the Wicked site. Disappoint the Wicked on YouTube. All right, continue. Right, Second Ezra six and six. Then did I consider these things, and they all were made through me alone, and through none other. By me also, they shall be ended. And yeah. by none other. That's right. So who's going to bring this this present day kingdom run by Esau, the so-called white man? Who's going to bring this present day kingdom down? The heavenly fathers. He's going to use his main. He's going to, he's going to use his angels. Well, he'll use first and foremost Yahweh Shai, the angels, and he's going to use his men. All right, as it as it is written. Go on. Then answered I and said, What shall be the parting asunder of the times? Or when shall be the end of the first and the beginning of it that followeth? Yeah, so Ezra's wanting to know. When is the end? What's, what's the first? That's talking about this present time we're in now. From Ezra's time, going back during the time of the um, Pers the Medio Persian Empire, which is how much thousands of years ago? Over 2,000 years ago, right? 2,500 roughly from that period up to where we at now. We're still in the first right now, cause now Esau is ruling. See, back then when Ezra was speak, when Ezra was asking when the parting of the time was gonna come, Esau or who you know as a so-called white race today, all right. And there's a history on that in itself, which me and his brother will do a future show on yep. when they started calling themselves white people, right? Yep. Going but to that. Es um, Esau was gonna be the ending of the first, so we're we're under Esau right now. Right. And we're at the end of Esau's rulership. We're not in the 1800s right now. No. Neither are we in the 1700s. That was, that was an early period of Esau. Esau's, well, we call that period, that, really that's, a little, that's that little season, which I personally call it Esau's last stand. Well, that, All right. that little season, Esau's little season began really in the, the, the uh, Renaissance period. The, the Renaissance. Right, right. The re, that was his rebirth. The rebirth. That's why they call it the rebirth. So from the Renaissance until now. That's is that, his little season. That little season and we call I call that Esau's last day, and we're at the ending part of his last day, because he's about to his legs are about to be cut off from before him, from from under him I should say. Go on. Verse eight, and he said unto me, from Abraham unto Isaac, when Jacob and Esau were born of him, Jacob's hand held first the heel of Esau. Going back to the birth of Jacob and Esau, you read that about that where Genesis twenty fifth chapter twenty first verse on down. Showing you it all boils down to Jacob and Esau. All the other nations, like you got the Asians, you got the, the natural Africans, you got the, uh, the, the East Indians, you got the Arabs. All those nations don't count. It all boils down to Jacob and Esau. Jacob is the father of what you call Negroes today, Latinos and Native Americans of Negroid and Indian descent. And Esau are the, so, the, red, the, red, the real red people, which is the so-called white men. Right. Go on. You are the real red people. 
It says, for Esau is the end of the world. So you're the, so you are the end of the world. Oh, well, are we in the end of the world? Yes. How do you know that we're at the end of the world? Because Esau, the so-called white man, is ruling. And we're at the end of his rulership. So the Lord, who you ignorantly call God, said Esau is the end of the world. Go on. And Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth. And the new world is going to be established here on earth. It's going to be under Yahweh, Bashem, Yahweh, Shai, and under Israel. Because Jacob right. is who? Israel. We're going to be ruling with our with our Lord and Savior. Our Lord and Savior, Yahweh, Shai, said, you're going to make us what? Into joint heirs with them in the kingdom that is to come. And that kingdom is going to be established right here on earth. That's right. And we're going to have the whole universe under us, man. That's we're going right. to be able to travel through space to different planets. We're going to do all that. All the stuff that the so-called white man is trying to trying to do so hard and he can't grasp it, we're gonna be there. We're gonna we're gonna enjoy everything to its fullness. We can't even imagine what we're gonna get, man. The Lord said, "Eyes have not seen, or ears have heard, of the things that His Father has prepared for them in the kingdom." That's right. So, so, so we have a, we have, we have we have a fortune waiting for us, brothers. You know, go on. It says and. Um, For Esau is the end of the world, and Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth. The hand of man is betwixt the heel and the hand. Other right. question. Right, it goes back to the heel and the hand. Going right. back to, because it was symbolic. When the right. babies were born, Jacob's hand, when Esau was the firstborn, at the you know, he came out of his mother first. And then Jacob followed him with his hand on Esau's heel, which was what? Symbolic. That we're gonna we're gonna pull him down. We'll pull his ass right now. All right, that's foundation. And we're living in that time, that period now. Yep. Go on. It says, I answered then and said, O Lord that bearest rule, if I have found favor in thy sight, I beseech thee, show thy servant the end of thy tokens. Right, because Ezra's wanted to know everything, man. Right. He wanted to know about the end times, which wasn't to come until twenty five years after that time. And we better believe Ezra's is back now. Matter of fact, um, right in that same book, Ezra's made it. When, he, when Ezra saw the destruction, he saw the nuclear missiles, he saw the diseases, people dropping dead, yep. the starvation. Mm -hmm. He saw the modern technology that we know that we know today, and he saw the, the the fire, and he said, "Woe is me! Woe is me! Who shall deliver me in those days?" Showing you that he understood that he was going to be back here at that time. That's right. Well, and he's doing what you see us doing. Yeah, you're. Pushing the word. Teaching the word. Go on. He says. Prophesying. Go on. He says. I beseech thee. Thy servant. Show thy servant the end of thy token. Right. He was begging the angel to show, show me these things. Show me these things. Go on. Whereof thou showedest me part the last night. Because you showed me part of them last night. But show me the rest. Show me everything. That's what he was saying. So he answered and said unto me, Stand upon thy feet and hear a mighty sounding voice, and it shall be as it were a great motion. But the place where thou standest shall not be moved. And therefore, when it speaketh, be not afraid, for the word is of the end, and the foundation of the earth is understood. And why? Because the speech of these things trembleth and is moved for it knoweth that the end of these things must be changed and it happened that when I had heard when I had heard it I stood upon my feet and hearkened and behold there was a voice that spake and the sound of it was like the sound of many waters that's Yahweh Shai that's right because it's good to tell you that the one who you ignorantly call Jesus Christ whose name is Yahweh Shai and yes he is a black man all right voice was like many words. His voice was like many, many, many. He had a powerful voice. He didn't speak soft like a gentleman or a faggot. All right? He spoke rough, loud and powerful. Mm -hmm. He spoke with a voice that will offend a lot of you people out there. Yeah. Because you were in a because you were now, especially you men of today, you're a bunch of weaklings, man. Yeah, you bunch of mangina. Manginas, you're weaklings. All right? Beta male. All right? Our Lord and Savior was not no beta male. Go on. And it said, Behold, the days come 
that I will begin to draw nigh and to visit them that dwell upon the earth. So we're living at a time now what? The Lord's getting ready to visit this place. That's why things ain't going to go back to normal. Y'all people looking for things to go back to normal. One, one is normalcy going to come back. And here it is, your own government gave it a name. They call it the new norm. New norm means this is the normal now, bitch. Yeah. It ain't going back to what you used to know. This All is right? the new normal. You know, they keep talking about people getting back to work. But going to work to do what? A lot of the, a lot of the businesses that you, a lot of you once worked at are closed now. A lot of them were, a lot of them while they were open were treading lightly. They have gone under. So where, where are you going to go back to work at? Where? Where are you going to work at? And then soon there are people who, okay, six months is what unemployment is set for. After that six months, a lot of you are going to be fucked like Chuck. Now, they offer, they're, they're all people are offered unemployment and, and unemployment extension, right? But if you're granted the extension, then okay, where are you going to find a job at? What are you going to do? All of these different places, a lot, of, a lot of people work in the hospitality business. That was a big part of this economy, the hospitality, which means people that were working in hotels, that were working in restaurants, right? Working, work, you're working in a, a mom and pop little mom and pop restaurant that does good for itself. You're working there, you're making your tips, whatever. Mom and pops are gone. Big chain restaurants are closing down and and and, and, uh, and closing up shop in locations that they're in. Mom and pop are being crushed. So where are a lot of these people going to work at? Where? You got WalMarts that are closing this year in different areas in the country. Walmart is a is is a big, a big ass chain, right? And they carry everything there. And a lot so, of, yep. Go ahead, brother. No, no, gotta finish, finish your point. You got WalMarts that are going under. Where are you going to return back to work? Where? Yeah, and then, then you're going into retail. How? And all your other jobs, your so-called white collar jobs, mm -hmm. they're shutting down. That's right. A lot of people I know, I know personally, I know chicks that have them little pushy jobs. I know them personally. They're telling me they got to do two, two day work weeks now. They're cutting down. Mm. You have a lot of people working from home, but if that company ain't pulling in the same amount of money they were pulling in, even if you're working from home, they're going to cut you from your home job. Yeah. Because they can't afford to keep giving you money if they ain't pulling in. Everything is this public, like, um, Ecclesiastes. We're living in a time of the grinding ceasing. That's right. And it is ceasing. We're, we're watching it right now in living color. That's right. It's, the grinding is ceasing, and that's a prophecy, man. See, we're living in the, what the brother's reading right now. The Lord is bringing this end, man. He's bringing it in. Bringing it to an end. Read that part again. Okay. Um, about bringing it to an end? Yeah, where, where, where you were at. You oh, just, just the about the voice of many waters. Yeah, start from there and come down. Verse 17. And it happened that when I had heard it, I stood upon my feet and hearkened. And behold, there was a voice that spake, and the sound of it was like the sound of many waters. Yeah, I was shy. That's yeah, I was shy. And it said, Behold, the days come that I will begin to draw nigh and to visit them that dwell upon the earth. Right, how is going to come back with them angels? That's with right. the chariots that you ignorantly call UFOs. So the Lord is drawing nigh to destroy this place. Go on. And I will begin to make inquisition of them. That's right. And the way he's going to make inquisition with you, he ain't going to come over here and talk to Esau and talk to the other nations and talk to the wicked. He come here, the way, the way he's going to talk to you is by way of burning your asses up. There you go. That's the inquisition. Yeah. Go on. And I will begin to make inquisition of them what they what they be that have hurt unjustly with their unrighteousness. The so-called white man and his, his wicked matter of fact, me and his brothers watching the thing on the green the green book that Jake a, 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 um, a black man from Harlem, he was a postman, wrote a he made a book for blacks that were traveling throughout the country to know where to go eat and where to go lodge. It was like from, from Boston to... From, yeah, from Boston to um, down south. You know, if you're going down to the down south, the people driving from um, Boston to North Carolina, just like today, down to Mississippi or wherever they were driving. Because remember, back in the 50s, that was the time when America in itself, everybody in America was about traveling by car. Right. That's why they were selling, they were selling Winnebago's. Um, they were selling little trailers that you plug to your car, right. and you could drag the trailer and go yep. cross country. Man, that's how Yem that's how um, Yemeni National Park, Yosemite, out, Yosemite, sorry, Yosemite, Yosemite National Park near Wyoming, over there, 
was popular. Mm. A lot of a lot, a lot of national parks across the country were popular places to visit for people to go driving to, no matter where you lived at. So as a Negro, you couldn't just go anywhere. Nope. Cause you get your ass hung or get killed or get shot up. So mm. he wrote a book to show black, and, and it, it didn't just cover the South. It was the whole country, even in the North, it was far reaches of the North. Yeah. Of where to go, where not to go, where where you would where you wouldn't be welcome and where you would be welcome. Right. All right. So that's good. It goes back to what we're reading right here. Read that. Go back to the Inquisition. And so, we'll begin to make inquisition of them. What they be that have hurt unjustly. You hurt our people unjustly with their unrighteousness. And right. all this is coming out full blast, you know, with this bullshit hype, this hashtag 